I believe at the moment that the number of drivers living who drove in the Indianapolis 500 is 288. And I think I just counted 31 right here. So that's better than 10% of all the drivers living who drove in the Indianapolis 500 are right here in front of you. How the hell are we going to do this? They've all got stories. If I was to be a judge, who's changed the most in the last 10 to 15 years? I would say Darren Manning is the one that's the, that's the hardest one to figure out. I put my head this short on purpose. He, he, I am not bald. No, somebody, somebody, and I'm not fat. It's just the way I'm sitting. Somebody, somebody showed me a photo of a cell phone of him. And uh, I want to touch on the youngsters for just a moment because there's something rather significant going on here. Um, there were three Unser brothers that ran in the 500. There was Jerry, Bobby, and Al. And then there was also Johnny, Al Jr., and Robbie. And uh, to, to make it a little bit easier, you had three brothers, each of whom had one son driving the 500. And the three of the, uh, the second generation, they're all first cousin to each other. And the three of them are sitting shoulder to shoulder right over there. I don't know how often that happens, but there's Johnny, Al Jr., and, and Robbie. And great to see you guys here also. And then I've got a trivia question, and I'll let you work on this for a few moments. And, and uh, forgive me if I'm sort of hogging the mic here, but uh, this is great trivia. Of all of the unsures that have driven in the 500, the six, what's the most number of unsures that drove against each other in the same 500 and i'll let you stew on that one for a moment it would be great if the answers don't know but anyway <laughs> comments from an answer or anybody else here all right al jr oh the answer is two and you are correct right. and most people would think at least three somebody that's okay the, the, the very shy tom steamer <laughs> i don't know about that but it is it's it's fun to come back uh we got to thank tony for bringing us all back together because it Sure brings back some great memories, and uh, and uh, like Davey said, uh, sometimes when you're involved every every race and every year, you, you don't realize how big a thing this is and how many great memories you're going to have down the road. Uh, I, I I doubt that trivia question with the answers though, because in '83 I could have sworn there was like five or six. Of them. <laughs> what Tony has been doing and what this kind of this kind of event is doing is a lot more than just uh, coming and drive a car. For a kid like me that was uh, dreaming about uh, Indianapolis 500, dreaming about these guys, to even have a chance uh, to get to be in the same room and get to meet all these people, uh, this is what it's all about. Before yeah. Simon gets a microphone, can we take a break? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good to be back here, to be honest with you. I had the opportunity once, in, if not twice almost, to win this race myself in 1987. We finished uh, sixth, running out of fuel during the race. And I remember Al Unser Sr., when I would pass him on the back straight going into three, he'd wave at me and smile, say, I know you can't make up that many laps. Go for it, Dick. <laughs> and and uh, I, I know I had my opportunity during all those years, and I know that uh, the good Lord just didn't see that it happened. Uh, but just being here and having those opportunities and finishing sixth and where I did finish a few times, uh, and having the pleasure to help as many people along the way as we did. As I look through this group of drivers right here, I can say that I engineered some of them as an engineer. I competed with them, and they drove for us, as a, and I was the owner, my wife and I. So I can really say that if you look back in my life, this place has been my life. And today, this this is probably one of the sweetest things for me to do, and that's to come here and be a part of this program. I th thank you all very much. And we got some show horses, and we got some stud horses. And he mentioned Unser, and I said, well, that's a stud family. You know, they're selling their semen, you know. You know, American Pharaoh is doing it. You know, so Uncle Bobby's uh, lead horse on that. <laughs> so I, I said, uh, I'd be delighted. So we got here and, and I thought it was going to be a powder puff flag football game until we got to the first corner. And I 
heard there was a prediction. Apparently, Al Jr. and I were at a uh, radio station, and the Joe, I think it was, said that Alex Lloyd and Peyton Manning. No, not Peyton Manning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Aaron Manning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Said, that, said that they were going to be on the podium this year. So I want all you other drivers to know, baby. All right. It was well, Alex who said it. Yeah, all right. It, I think it was Johnny, actually. Yeah. Right. <laughs> all right. The predictions have started. Like Al and Robbie and everybody else, it's really fun to be here. And great opportunity. And thanks, Tony, especially, and Speedway for putting this together. And it kind of started, reminded me like the old days. We were sitting around today, and, and it was raining, and it was Robbie and I and Willie T. And there was a few stories being told and talking about old teammates and everything. And, I mean, Willie, he mentioned how tight him and Bruce Jenner were back in the day. <laughs> and so, I don't know, some of you might want to have some questions for Willie. <laughs> he, he claimed that the Unser family was selling stuff. We, he's got it way on us. <laughs> so I came to U.S. You know, I've never driven an oval before. And uh, who do I go? You know, I go. You know, talk to you know Al Junior because he's the king of the ovals. I'm out there in Michigan. You know, so I woke up early, go to his motorhome. He had a motorhome. I came. I was in the uh, Ann Arbor Holiday Inn. Drive in, go there. He's preparing breakfast. He makes this. Uh, eggs and he puts, he fills them up with the jalapeno. I eat, never had jalapeno in Italian, you know. We don't, we don't have that kind of stuff there. So I eat this stuff, no problem. The next two days, big problem. <laughs> so. That was probably his grandmother's recipe, probably. I don't, I, he will, I, I remember very clearly. <laughs> you know, I had tears coming down like this. Anyway. I, every, every time I went back, I avoided, you know, the omelette and whatever thing with jalapeno, but I said, because the guy is that bad, much of a badass guy on oval, so every time I went on an oval on Sunday, before the race, I always made sure I had eggs with jalapeno. I did, the Tuesday was a tragedy, man. It worked pretty good, because I learned how to drop on the oval, and uh, I never told him that. I still remember. I grew up primarily road, uh, road racing and uh, to getting back into uh, uh, to that for me, like last year, I hadn't been in a Trans Am car for 35 years. And, uh, 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 but when I was running the, uh, um, the uh, 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 Formula 5000 uh, series, and that was I think in the mid 70s or early 70s, uh, I had the opportunity, okay, to watch my friend Dick in my mirrors flying behind me at Riverside, okay? And so when I had the first race here last year, I had the same privilege of watching him spin out in corner one. On the first, I mean, everywhere I look, there's a Dick Simon, okay? And, uh, and he's always where he shouldn't be. <laughs> but uh, uh, this group is in incredibly important to our family. Our family has uh, uh, just adopted this, uh, this group in general. By the way, Bob, I was spinning out because you were crashing in front of me. <laughs> that could have been, that could have been. <laughs> but I was in front. If you were <laughs> just for a moment. <laughs>